For over 30 years, Steve Berger's career has been marked by purpose and passion. He is the founding pastor of Tennessee's Grace Chapel, and he now serves as the CEO and president of Ambassador Services International, a ministry for government leaders. For years, he and his wife, Sarah, have had a heart for the world's persecuted. They've become very involved in the Middle East, financially supporting Christians in Mosul after ISIS attacked, and also working with U.S. leaders to get believers relocated to safe countries. He's seen the devastation on the ground in places like Turkey and Syria and Iraq. And he's here to tell us what practical steps the church can take to support our brothers and sisters overseas. Pastor Steve, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Great to be with you, Tony. Always a pleasure. Well, let's start right where I left off with Congressman Frank Wolf, who is obviously passionate about this and has been working for decades. And uh, he and I have had many, many conversations uh, over my 20 years in, in Washington about the, uh, the, the absence of the, church, the church's voice. And I know, as he pointed out, it's not universal, but it's not loud. Why is yeah. that? Well, I think Frank hit the nail on the head. There, there's definitely an apathy about it. I think that people feel um, overwhelmed. They don't know where to start. They don't know if they can really make a difference. And because of that, it causes people just to recoil and kind of do nothing. And so what Sarah and I have tried to do for the last, you know, 10 or 15 years for sure uh, is be very intentional about waking the church up and to let them know that even though we might not solve the entire problem, if we can solve one person's life, if we can solve a village's life and their problems, if we can help them then let's get after what we can do and not be overwhelmed by what we can't do. Well, well, Pastor Steve, just quickly, just walk our folks through how you led your church into this. I mean, there had to be a starting point. How did it start? The starting point is simple. It's just being aware of the problem. And this is, I mean, this is so practical, Tony. I really want everybody to get a, a handle on this. I promise you, if you will show up and make yourself available to Jesus, I guarantee you he will open up opportunities for you and your church to go and make a difference. So become aware, and then just start to act on it. Whatever that looks like, back when it was easier to travel it internationally, I know when we would just show up in a country to show Christian love for our brothers and sisters, that meant almost as much as the gifts that we would bring. So be aware, show up when you can. When you can't show up, then give. Show up by giving, by supporting, and letting them know that they haven't been forgotten. So many of our beloved um, persecuted friends, our brothers and sisters, they feel like they've been forgotten. We cannot forget them. We've got to remember them in their chains, as the Apostle Paul said. Let's not be ashamed of them. But let's get after helping them tangibly pray, give, support, show up when you can, and repeat that. Just keep doing it over and over again. We'll see lives change. Share with our our viewers that personal experience you had in, in the wake of ISIS in the Middle East. You went there. You saw the devastation. Yeah, it really was just the the trip of a lifetime in, in not a positive sense, but just um, last fall, I went with a mutual friend of ours, Tony, um, to um, deep inside of Syria, a very covert trip, and where we were able to meet with um, religious, political, and governmental leaders who had experienced just the most horrific treatment not just by ISIS, but by the Turkish government, um, villages that have been bombed, uh, wives and daughters that have been uh, arrested and raped and sold as slaves. I mean, just the, the greatest amount of personal sadness that I've ever seen in my life and devastation. Hearing these people's testimonies, I mean, I don't know how you can follow Jesus and then not do something about it? How can you not get involved? How can you not write a check? How can you not speak up? 
How can you not call your representative, your senator? How can you not speak up for those who don't have a voice? It's it's beyond me, but I'm grateful for your program, programs like this that are helping get the word out. We've got to remember the people that are suffering and hurting right now and not just remember, act on their behalf. And, and folks, we certainly want to encourage you to do that because there are some great ministries that this is their focus. Open Doors, you've seen some of the videos we played, comes from Open Doors, Voice of the Martyrs. Those are two ministries that, uh, that our family personally supports. Uh, there are others that are out there that are, are, are good as well. And, and even uh, Samaritan's Purse, while they're focused on humanitarian relief, they take the gospel into places that uh, others are not able to, and they minister to those communities, and we support them a as well. Uh, uh, Pastor Steve, your experience, you've, you've been a part of helping um, those that are being persecuted for their faith come to this country and go to other countries where they can live securely. There's a lot of discussion about immigration policy. Uh, and, and uh, you know, this is one area, uh, along with Turkey, that I disagreed with the previous uh, the president and had conversations with uh, him about this, uh, because I think we need to have an immigration policy, a refugee policy that allows people to come here when they're being persecuted and they have no other place to go. But there are some other problems, fundamental problems in our immigration policy uh, that you've experienced. Uh, share your thoughts with us on that. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about immigration, Tony, it's obviously a, a big multi-layered, multi multifaceted problem. Um, I'm grateful that the scripture actually has the solution to immigration. And if we would just turn to what the scripture says, we could see that turned around in our nation. It's very, very disheartening, I must say. I was in Amman, Jordan. Uh, they're working with refugees from Mosul and have testimony from the higher ups in the UN where they knew for a fact and were reporting to me that Christians who were trying to get out of Amman and relocated into other countries, that their applications were regularly being put on the bottom of the pile and Muslims were being sent to other countries when Christians were being totally, totally forgotten about and, um, and being prejudiced against. So it, it's, a, it's a really, really um, sad and even disgusting thing to see the persecution level that happens within immigration and the US's policy and coordination with the UN, et cetera. It, it needs a complete overhaul our relationships with other countries need an overhaul in how we deal with this. Canada for years has done a much better job. Uh, I've worked with senators on this to try to get us to adopt Canada's um, approach to this, where we could have entire churches sponsoring vetted, safe, persecuted Christians, bringing them into the U.S. and then providing for them so it doesn't take any U.S. tax dollars. We could be doing that very, very easily, and yet the U.S. administrations in the in the past have not been open to that, and it's a very tragic and sad thing. We've got to let our voice be heard on that. Yeah, and it's it's as you said, it's a multi-layered issue, and, and it often gets jumbled up when you talk about immigration. People immediately think to the southern border, people coming across the border illegally. We're talking about uh, refugee policies that allow those that are being persecuted for their faith fully vetted, fully vetted, right. coming to this country, uh, and it is a legal means of immigrating to this country. There's a cap uh, put on this. I think currently it's maybe back up to 100,000. It was at 60,000. President Trump had it down to, I think, 18,000 um, a year. And these are people that are going to likely die where they are or suffer tremendous persecution because of their faith. And it, it, it need, we need a thoughtful policy, and it is something Great. that we do need to pray through, uh, but also advocate uh, for. Uh, Pastor Steve, I want to thank you for the work that you've done and the example you've, you've set as a pastor. I know your church has adopted uh, different families, and you've supported them who have come over. You're, you're doing what you said would be good policy. You've been acting that out, and I, I commend you for that as being an example. Would you close our time together by, by simply praying over this and praying for the church, praying for Christians that 
just as you said, we would start where we are with what God gives us to do something that would make a tangible difference in the lives of those being persecuted for following Jesus. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we do right now choose to remember the persecuted and the the troubled uh, around the world. Lord, those that are going through profoundly difficult times, Lord, we choose to remember them. We pray for them right now. God of all comfort, would you comfort them in their affliction? And God, for the church in the United States of America, may you wake us up to what's happening around the world. May we look beyond the bubble of comfort that we live in and see the big picture, see what's happening around the world. May we engage in prayer. May we engage in giving and may we engage in speaking, Lord. May we become advocates for those who are having trouble speaking up for themselves. Holy Spirit of the living God, move on the church in America to bless those that are persecuted around the world, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Pastor Steve, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you, Tony.